Hi, I'm Drew Hutchison. You're tuned to Local Bias. We come to you from the studios of Greenfield Community Television at 393 Main Street in Greenfield. And my guest today is one of my all-time favorite guests. He comes on every now and then to discuss matters of most importance to all of us, even if we're not aware of it. And I'm talking about the Connecticut River. It affects everybody in Greenfield, Franklin County, uh, where I work in Hadley. And we don't even, we take it for granted, much like we take gravity for granted, except for there aren't any laws about gravity other than the law of gravity. Whereas with the Connecticut River, there are laws about relicensing. In fact, today we're talking about the Northville Mountain Storage Facility and how it is being impacted through the FERC uh, relicensing. To talk to that, up to that end, Carl Meyer, thank you for coming on the show. Drew, my pleasure. So it's been a while. This it has been fun. a while. I'm glad and, to be here. And it, I find I learn so much every time you come on because you go to so many of these meetings, you dig through all the paperwork and all the filings, kind of follow the process. And so what I'm hoping you can do for our audience today is, in a condensed version, tell us what's going on and is there anything we can do? All right. So let's, yeah, let's uh, take it through here. We are in... Year number six of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, as everybody has heard, relicensing process for Northfield Mountain and the Turner's Falls Dam and Cabot Station. So basically we're talking about seven miles of the river, but it really impacts another 20 miles up to the Vernon Dam in Vermont because that's the giant pool of water that Northfield Mountain Pump Storage sucks up to its reservoir. And then it, when it disgorges that water, it affects, it impacts areas all the way down past North, Northampton and they actually have to wait and sort of adjust the Holyoke Dam, which is 36 miles downstream from Turner's Falls in accordance to Northfield Mountain, sort of uh, either they're pumping river water up to their mountain or, or sucking or, it up, or sucking it up, <laughs> sucking up, whatever. But so let's but let's start way back before it was built. Okay, okay. Um, billions and billions, billions of years, years ago. ago. <laughs> um, this uh, machine and and I've described the Northfield Mountain Pump Storage Station as the deadliest appliance in operation on the Connecticut River today. Um, was conceived along with the Vermont Yankee nuclear plant. Because, to use the excess energy, basically. Right. Basically, the energy that was the overabundant bloated energy that was going unused at night, well, let's hack out the top of a mountain, and we can suck a river up, put the water up there, and then we can capitalize on the, on the peak, peak times of the day or whatever, and we'll, we'll send that water down. And so you get these, these, this flood of electricity a couple of times a day, but even in 1967, I have a document here that's from the uh, New England Cooperative Fisheries Agreement, which is basically what today is known as the Connecticut River Atlantic Salmon Commission, mm -hmm. authorized by Congress way back in the day, still in effect, trying to restore anadromous migratory fish to the Connecticut River all the way up into Vermont and New Hampshire as far as 172 miles from the sea. Uh, Northfield is 122, 125 miles from the sea. And it's a big reason that things never really got off the ground. Originally in 1967, they, they figured they could get two million shad a year Coming up to Holyoke, they would pass one million fish. 850,000 of those were gonna be passed upstream of Turner's Falls Dam, which is basically the, the sort of uh, the gatekeeper for Northfield's gigantic water appetite. And, uh, and then I think 750,000 were supposed to reach Vermont, New Hampshire. This was, a, this was gonna be an ecosystem restoration. Way back then, um, let me, let's just read you one thing. This is from a 1967 agreement and I'm reaching for my glasses on top of my head here. This is federal testimony 
I mean, this, this is from a uh, federal law that sort of brought this in. Based, this is 1967, five years before Northfield came online. Based on the present fragmentary data available on the Northfield pump storage project, it appears that this project poses definite limitations to an anadromous fish restoration program. And boy, did it ever. Well, boy, in fact, the program failed. Boy, has it, well, you, you would have to say that. And, and um, today we really, even I have been involved in this relicensing as a stakeholder and a member of the Fish and Aquatics study team, which involves people from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Marine Fisheries Service, uh, State Division of Fish and Wildlife Service, and other, other nonprofits. Uh, since 2012, and we've been doing studies, but even after six years in all the state, we still have no idea of the destructive power of this plant. But to give people a real sense of it, Northfield Mountain is essentially, it, it operates like a, a, an electric toilet, right? It, and it uses more, it, it consumes more energy than it will ever Push right, it out takes again. a lot of energy to suck it all up. <laughs> right. It, and and it, it, it literally, at times when they, they, they usually pump the water uphill is at night, but, but I, there's one incident where, where Dr. Boyd Kennard, who's, who's a migratory fish expert, tells me he was, he was actually on the river with his son a mile, just about a mile down, a couple hundred yards up from the French King Bridge, mm -hmm. and found himself being pulled backward. He was drifting for bass on the bottom of the river in his loom, but all of a sudden he's been pulled upstream. So that's how powerful this machine is, this appliance is, and it actually sucks in water at the rate of 15,000 cubic feet per second. And I like to give people a little visual uh, picture of 15,000 milk crates mm -hmm. per second at a time for hours at a time now picture them with fish in them, mm -hmm. They're getting or fish up. eggs, or juvenile right. fish, or eels, or aquatic plants, or animals. That's what Northfield Mountain has been doing, and pretty much unchallenged. They, they've pretty much had carte blanche for these last 50 years since they came online. Now we're trying to get a license that is finally going to protect the Connecticut River after all these years. And like I said, it's been it's it's a, it's a ponderous process that's been going on since 2012. I've been involved with it since the get-go. September 2012, we had our first sort of meeting and tour of the plant. And it is continuing to go on. I remain a stakeholder and, and when I When you just, say stakeholder, what are you referring to? Stakeholder means, means that I have a relationship with this river. The public, everybody is say, a stakeholder. I, okay. Um, but there's a certain level of involvement in the process that FERC will recognize. And if you comment and if you have um, sort of not exclusive knowledge, but good general knowledge. And yeah, you yeah. demonstrate that, you know, you sort of, you, you are sort of brought into the process. Now I left off the process, I have to say about a year ago now, because there are also, there's a separate part of the FERC process that allows for um, settlement discussions on the side. And it involves a lot of power company giving out money and putting in, putting in all putting in all these you know well we'll do this if you do that, and you know some people you know prefer they say we'll get a, we don't know what FERC would do what what conditions they'll impose on the site since we'd rather have an understanding people want certainty, so they have this includes National Marine Fisheries representatives U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, state people. Um, conservancy people have signed off on this. As a journalist and a reporter, I could not. Right. So I've, this is the only reason that you're getting some background on this whole piece. Because when they because sign of one of those agreements, they also typically sign a non-disclosure. Exactly. Confidentiality agreement. So those talks are going to go on right now. But the license is supposed to be up in just a month and a half, two months, April 30th, 2018. It's not, it's not going to be done. There are still outstanding studies trying to figure out how many uh, how we how how they might possibly not kill all the juvenile shad that'll be coming down. And one of, one of the things that I do know about is there's a, a a barrier net that they might try to put up 1,500 yards of a big curtain in front of Northfield because it virtually it virtually kills everything that it sucks into those turbines. And they go twice through the turbines because they got to go up and they got to come back down a mile shoot through these turbines at 20 thousand CFS. So everything that Northfield pulls in is considered functionally extirpated, 
read dead, and that includes adult juveniles, eggs, the whole bit. So there's one thing, <coughs> excuse me, there's one thing that they're, they're, um, they're going to be trying this after the migration. They're going to try that in the fall. This spring, they're going to be trying another. Um, they're going to use ultrasound to try to, um, to try to keep migrating upstream sh American shad from trying to enter the Turner's Falls Power Canal, which is, which is why so the river so gets diverted. So they're hard-coded in their DNA to follow a certain migratory path. And right, they follow the flow. They right. follow that pull. And these are ocean-going fish. This is, the Connecticut River basically is, is the central artery of this ecosystem. And it has been so powerfully abused by this plant and by lack, there are environmental laws, Drew. The only problem is that we don't have the, uh, the individual agencies or groups that are willing to push them in court. Right? So, you know, if, if nobody says you've broken this law or nobody's willing to get into a courtroom, the abuse goes on. And I have to say here, and I'm hoping this doesn't prove true at the end of this licensing process, the Massachusetts Division of uh, Fish and Wildlife has been really kind of poor and, and, and quiet mm -hmm. about... Do they receive any funding from... Uh... Well, there, there's, there's... Well, from who? I mean... Well, from people who... Or, or entities that maybe would like to see the the situation continue the way it is? Well, so I don't, I, I don't know that the point. state does per se, but the governor, the governor, you know, sort of likes corporations. Mm -hmm. The governor is a Republican governor. The governor, you know, is sort of signed on to, to some things. He sort of signed us on to, uh, you know, some climate help. But it's really about importing our or exporting our energy responsibilities and having that power come down from Canada. Or there's a new there's a new piece that's coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. They want to put turbines, and they will put wind turbines out off Martha's Vineyard. But the new scheme that came in just a couple months ago is they want to theoretically say that. Those turbines are going to um, theoretically connect via a long extension cord. So a uh, turbine spinning out in the Atlantic off Marshall's Vineyard is going to connect up to Northfield Mountain to pull a river into reverse, kill fish, and go upstream. So I, it, this to me seems like a bad Greek tragedy. You know, it's like swallowing your children, taking, taking something as, as renewable as wind and, and killing an ecosystem in the process so that you can keep this giant scheme, which should be a dinosaur. We should be doing away with this. There is more, there are many more ways to solve so our energy problems. So is there just a profit to be made? Is that really why? Well, Drew, 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 Drew. Of course well, there's a profit to be made. This plant has sold, um, you know, the last time it was sold was 2016. It sold three times. Uh, to venture capital owners within a decade. The current owners, Canadian, mm -hmm. right? It was French before that. Uh, you know, yeah, a Canada public, C, uh, PSP investments, public sector pension investments, 100% uh, Canadian Crown Corporation has bought into our river where we have endangered uh, Connecticut River short nose sturgeon, uh, American uh, shad, sea lamprey, American eel, and these uh, shad are, these are federal trust species. This, mm -hmm. is, this, this is what U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Marine Fisheries, they're all supposed to be protecting these fish. Northfield Mountain poses the grave danger to all these creatures. And this is a four-state river. This belongs to the people of the United States. New Hampshire and Vermont have never seen the 850,000 shad that are supposed to reach there. They never get back past Turner's Falls Dam, they're gonna have to build some new fish passage. But if you lock up Northfield and they wanna run it more, there's this whole request. Now, I, you know that recently Scott Pruitt mm -hmm. and Neil Chatter, Chatterjee, uh, a FERC uh, commissioner, this never happens. Out of the blue, they drop in on Northfield Mountain. Isn't that interesting? Without inviting anybody, any of the federal or state environmental officials that have been sitting at the table and trying to advocate for the public trust on this thing, they show up at Northfield and just cheerlead the hell out of this thing. Right in the middle of a relicensing. Can you imagine? You wonder if, there, if there's, you know, there's a, the fix in? 
Help me well, out here. It, well, let me ask you, do you think the fix is in? I, mean, I, I think they're game in the system. I think they, you know, they, they want to keep this thing going. And it is, it is a travesty to think that the people that want that want to have renewable energy in Massachusetts, in the Commonwealth, that want to address climate change, would take a giant machine, a net loss energy machine, and make that a central port, port and point in, in, in how we're going to meet our energy needs. And when Northfield generates, there's no guarantee that that energy is even coming back to, to consumers in the Commonwealth, right? right? Just goes to national grid. Right. And, and there's, there's every reason to use new battery storage. Uh, technologies that are here today that can be put where the closer to where the energy is made and consumed. There's uh, uh, what's called compressed air technology. They can be set on, on old brownfields and factory settings. They're, they don't have a huge footprint. And they will start to create the grid of that we need today and tomorrow. They'll create jobs, and they also they also are instantaneously responsive. Mm -hmm. But they're also you're consuming the the electricity where it's needed. Right. right? Actually, that would have helped Puerto Rico if they had decentralized energy. Absolutely, then it would have taken less time to get back up and running. This is the grid that we should be looking at: micro micro grids and uh, what's called distributed energy. Instead. We have Scott Pruitt coming here, we have Neil Chatterjee, and all of a sudden, all they can talk about is we're gonna use our natural resources to the, to the best, basically what they're saying is we're gonna use them to the max. This, was, this is all it's about extractive. big money. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, and Scott Pruitt was famous for fighting the EPA before he became in charge of them. Scott Pruitt does not believe in climate change. Scott Pruitt at the EPA had references to climate change. Removed, removed from, from documents. From the EPA website. And his visit, believe it or not, came only a month after the, the FERC itself had denied Northfield Mountain wanted to pump more water over the winter and they claimed that uh, the independent system operator, which is ISO New England, needed more Northfield Mountain juice during the winter because it would, it would make sure that their grid was reliable. And FERC turned around and said, well, you know, actually, the response we got from ISO New England did not really say that. They just said we'd like to, we will make use of all the available resources right. if we need to. But the main thrust of that was that the Connecticut River short nosed sturgeon, this millions of year old fish, mm -hmm. was found upstream of Turner's Falls, which we never knew. Uh, uh, there was, there's, there's never been too many rumors of its existence beyond Turner's Falls, but we right. know just below Turner's Falls is where its That's sort of natural, right. its natural spawning ground is, right. and it's being starved by, by Turner's Falls Dam diverting water in, in, in response to Northfield's needs and to make more energy downstream. But all of a sudden, upstream, they found, uh, they found a federally endangered short-nosed sturgeon. So FERC turned them down because the National Marine Fisheries Service said, well, there may be an endangered fish here. Mm -hmm. And then, the EPA guy comes and cheerleads this plant. They don't say a word about the environment, about the river, about federal trust fish, about short nose. So, so let's say the fix is in. Okay. The fix is let's in. Let's go. <laughs> That's because this, because then we come back to, well, what can we do? Because you were saying that there were no entities that seemed to want to take up the cause and be willing to drive it through the courts. Mm. This is this is a big question, uh, Andrew, and Drew. You've answered to it. You know, <laughs> and uh, you can um, people can uh, actually go to FERC.gov and there's a place for e-comments, and you can actually go on. And if you if you keep it fairly short, you need to know that the um, you need to know that this is a hydro project and that you need to know these two numbers. Or let's repeat them after I say them. Okay. P2485 is the Northfield Mountain Pump Storage Plant, and you would check that if you want to comment. And you would also check P-1889, which is the Turner's Falls Project, Cabot Station. And then you can go and you make a little Word document and you can say what you think. My, my great fear here is that we really don't, I mean, 
nobody stood on their head and said, what the hell is Scott Pruitt doing here in the middle of the license? Why, why, why isn't there? We used to have well, groups the, that Well, the would, recorder covered that he was here, but they didn't ask, they didn't suggest that there was anything untoward about it. That there was, there was some little blowback by the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, the Conservancy made, oh, why is this big fish that we wish we had known? Mm -hmm. this, they didn't want you to know. Right. And this is the time where if you're worth your salt, you come out and say, how dare you come here right in the middle of our license negotiations right. and not address these issues? So, you know, that is one of my big worries is at the end of this license, which will not be signed until probably the middle of 2019. It'll be extended after this year where there's no negotiations are just preliminary at this point. Even on the major issues, we have major studies. My worry is at the end of this, okay, you, you know, you, maybe you get some really great things. You get more water in the river, and that's, that's really the name of the game. We have a river that's starved of water and vicious flows, and we have a river that sucks everything up a hill and kills everything. It sucks. If, you, if you get those issues addressed in a license that's going to last, we don't know, one decade, two decades, maybe three, mm -hmm. and we don't have any environmental groups that have a backbone and independent enough to go out and say, this, the buck stops here, we're about enforcement, we're gonna make sure, then all you have is another paper tiger. And well, you know, there have been laws on the books for a long time, but we've known about So the, the evidence is there that they haven't abided by the laws? Well, 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 there's evidence, I don't wanna say that per se, I mean, the, 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 the story of the abuse of First of all, our only federally endangered fish, the Connecticut River short nosed sturgeon. The, 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 the story was written after Northfield came online okay. and after Turner's Falls came online. Right. But once you have the evidence, and here we have only a couple of hundred fish that maybe a couple dozen get to try and spawn each year, it's because of your, middle, your miserable flows. Somebody should have said, we have to change this right now. We've known about it for, what, 2004, 2005, I think, Dr. Kennard, uh, you know, published this, gave it to National Marine Fisheries. Somebody, Watershed Council, Conservancy, should have stepped up and said, well, danger but, but, fish. But really, why should we care if it's sturgeon? You're I mean, that's right. an ugly fish. What You're can, right. Thank so you. What it, Thank you for joining I mean, us today. Well, well, the thing is, is that, I mean, I, the people, you know, the regular average Joe doesn't think that, oh, well, this, this special moth is stopping a progress or this, this little bird or this worm or this sturgeon. So what's the... What is the reason why we should care about some barely extinct creature? ecosystem? Ever heard the term ecosystem? It's sort of the underpinning of how we are here. There's there's land and then there's water. There's this big artery that has forever, back into the mist of time, connected us to the ocean. Where we wanna, we wanna fish. We wanna eat fish. We also want that connection, but it also, the, you know, the river is, is the baseline for our groundwater. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is also our sewage sink, right? Yeah. And I'm always, I'm sort of astounded, you know, this slightly gets off topic, but right. I mean, we're, we'll spend millions of dollars on a new parking garage, say, here in Franklin County. And then people say, oh, I don't want my water bill to go up because we need, we need new sewage improvements mm -hmm. or we need, and that's where the money should be going. This is the right. life giving. This is really what gives us life. Cars should be becoming a thing of the past, but people are up in arms that they'll, we had better start thinking about rebuilding the sewage plant because the way climate's going, that thing is gonna get pummeled and you know, and right. you know, I'm not, I'm not. I'm, well, and even looking at the EPA, which, which people just, you know, you hear Republicans today talk about how awful the EPA is, they're stopping progress and yet, it was under Nixon that it was signed into law and it had a great deal of support from conservatives because if you're a conservative, well, well don't you wanna leave the world a better place for your children? Isn't that a conservative value? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so environmentalists can be on the left and on the right on, on economic issues, but as far as the legacy of the stewardship of our land. Oh, we don't we owe anything to our great grandchildren. We, we don't need to leave them a functioning ecosystem. And that's what this whole relicensing process is. I, I consider this the last chance for an ecosystem to be somewhat reconnected. I mean, it has been throttled for the last, since 1972 by, by Northfield Mountain to, to the nth degree. And, 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 and you reach a point where things cannot, and cannot be renewed, cannot, cannot be redeemed. 
And this is the last chance that I believe this river is going to see in Vermont, New Hampshire, Northern Massachusetts to actually have a functional ocean connection, which is really the underpinning of, of a planet. I mean, there, these, are the, these are the arteries and veins of a planet. And, you know, we have a, the ocean is becoming more acidic, it's becoming warmer. This is, there are all sorts of connections to climate in this. I mean, you know, they're, they're just, to me, it's, it's just a, a slam dunk of wh why you would you would sort of curtail as much as possible. Especially when you, we can really show there's, there is not the need for Northfield Mountain. There, I mean, this is something that's going to be going away because, well, first of all, because of climate, you're going to have power. You know, we've just seen a bunch of storms and power outage. You're not going to need some big plant that's way out in western Massachusetts that is going to, you know, they're going to, okay, well, the, the wires went down, you know, off of Martha's Vineyard. We're going to send that energy all the way up here, run it up there. You need energy where it is, and you need a, you need a grid that's going to be resilient in ways that are going to address what is coming. And what, what is coming is really, we already seeing it, it's climate disruption. So we need community power. Mm -hmm. We need solar. We need wind. We need hydro. Northfield Mountain is nothing like hydro. Right. It is a net loss uh, electric toilet that will never and has never produced a single watt of its own virgin electricity. It's, it's basically the old way of buying low and selling high. Yes. I mean, that's what it does. It's perfect. There was a woman that wrote a book that's that sort of, you know, that, uh, oh God, I can't remember her name, but she wrote about Niagara. Now, there's a little pump storage plant over by Niagara Falls. There's one out in Michigan. But I mean, that was it. It's, it's the basic old trick of buy, low, sell. Somebody figured out, hey, we can make some money off of this thing. We got this nuclear plant. Well, now it's just, it's nuclear. It should have been nuclear junk. It should have gone down. Right. When Vermont it's, Yankee it's went obsolete. down it, in really. what, March 2014, December 2014, Vermont Yankee. I mean, there's no longer. So now you're going you're gonna to take what should be on the horizon as this new and sort of wonderful and truly renewable power, wind off the ocean, great idea, and you're going to use it to suck a river backwards and kill fish? Doesn't make much sense to me, but what does make sense to me is that we've, we're out of time, Carl. Well, Already. Darn it, we ought to do this again in we another, ought to do this, I, I know. don't know well, how, well, but I, I've well, enjoyed you know it. Maybe not on local bias, maybe we can work together to get out some public service announcements or something, yeah, because we, there's only, the time is short. So now the ball's in your court. Thank you for tuning in to Local Bias. I'm Drew Hutchison. Take care. Mm -hmm.